Hey there, everybody. So you're thinking about moving to Salt Lake City, Utah, and you want to know what the top 10 cons of actually living here are? Well, let's jump in. Con number 10 is going to be your high housing costs here in Salt Lake City. And while the prices of homes have gone up pretty much everywhere since COVID, here in Salt Lake City, they've gone up even more as more and more people are relocating here to the Salt Lake City area. Rents are out of control here. You can't get affordable housing as far as renting goes. And buying has only gone up each year since I've been here. We have such a limited supply of housing. One of the reasons that the prices of homes here in Utah are going to stay high and will continue to keep going up is the available land that we have to build on. 71% of all the land in the state of Utah is public land, so they can't build on it, which leaves us 29% of the land to build on. And while they do uh, get some of the land every now and then from the state, we just aren't having as much buildable land as someplace like Texas has to build on. Currently, the average home in Salt Lake County is selling for $708,000 as of this month. And here's what the current average sales price is of a single family home in a few of the cities in Salt Lake County. South Jordan, $765,000 or 95% of list price. So good value can be found in South Jordan right now. Harriman, $695,000 or 97% of list price. So there's not as much value that you can get as far as negotiating with the sellers in Harriman. However, I can definitely help Get you that 3% or more. Riverton, you're looking at 774000 or 95% of list price. So we're back to good value there. Draper, 945000 or 95% of list, which once again, that's good value there. Sandy, you're looking at 752000 or 96% of list. So a little bit worse than those other two cities, but not as bad as Harriman. So West Jordan, 553000 or 98% of list price. So the cheaper the home price is, the less you're typically going to be able to negotiate as well. In order for us to get a really good idea of what things are going right now in the market and what things are selling for here, we're going to need to take a look at what the current homes are on the market. So let's see what the current home sales price are of those cities that I just gave you the sold prices of on my website, thespackmangroup.com. All right, so I have my website, thespackmangroup.com open here. And as you can see, there are 665 homes in those cities that are currently for sale. You're looking, here's one in Harriman for 561, a little three bedroom, three bath. This is a brand new construction home in a great location. Uh, it's right down the road from where I live, so I drive by them all the time. 580, 566. Again, Harriman, Harriman. Here's a Draper one right at a million. It's a short sale, so that one will be a little bit specific, but reach out if you're interested in that. Uh, 806 Home and Draper, Riverton 650, three car garage on that one. That's nice. Uh, 455, four bedroom, four bath. Uh, home in West Jordan. Here's a 630 in Draper, 1.5 million in Riverton. 869, 575, 524, 799, 3.5 million in Draper. This is amazing. This location, I've been to that subdivision. Um, 661, 619. These are in South Jordan, so they're going to be in daybreak most likely. Uh, here's a West Jordan 530, West Jordan 625, 444 West Jordan, 799, 1.2. As you can see, oh, here's a 515 in West Jordan, and all the way down here to this 520, three bedroom, three bath, one in Harriman. Let's take a look at the most expensive home. The most expensive home right now on the market in those cities, $6.2 million, six bedroom, nine bath, 14,000 square foot home in South Jordan, three acres, awesome home. And then there's a Draper one, 4.7 million. And then the least expensive home, we got one at 415 here in West Jordan, then 420. So if you're trying to stay under 500,000, you're gonna need to be in West Jordan. Anything above that in the fives and sixes, sevens, eights, nines, you're gonna be able to pick any of those other cities. And then we have some other cities as well that are around like Midvale or Murray that you can you know, save a little bit more money, but you're gonna get a different uh, type of home. And that's one of the reasons you're going to reach out to me so that I can help pinpoint the right area for you to be in. Hey there, I'm Greg Speckman, and I'm a licensed real estate agent here in the state of Utah. And as much as I like making these videos for you, I absolutely love it when you reach out to me. So give me a call, shoot me a text, send me an email. 
and let's get you on your way here to Salt Lake City. Con number nine is going to be your street naming convention, and that's how they name the streets here in Utah. And when I first moved here, it was really, really difficult. It made no real sense to me how they were set up. I knew that they were numbers, and it would say like 11,000 south by 8,000 east. I knew that it kind of had to deal with a particular part in downtown Salt Lake, the Temple Square. And so as I've lived here, I get to like it more and more as I've lived here longer. So it took, I want to say, the first six, eight, nine months of living here before that started to make a lot more sense. And even though it's still easier to know street names by their like name, whether it be, you know, like some such and such boulevard rather than 11,200, you will learn how that works after you have been here a while, you'll start to get an idea of where things are, and then it'll make a lot more sense to you. And then it won't be such a con, but it's going to start out and be a con unless where you live, they do streets that way as well. Con number eight of living here in Salt Lake City, and that's traffic. And so traffic during the peak rush hour times is pretty rough here in Utah. And then the east west because we don't really have any freeways that go east to west from I-15 going out west to say West Jordan or South Jordan or Harriman where I live, you really are rele relegated to using Bangator and that's pretty much it. So you're taking I-15 down or you're taking uh, certain side streets that you're gonna be taking and then you're stuck with a ton of lights. So well, whenever I'm up in Salt Lake and coming back to where I'm at, I just end up using my Apple Maps and it'll typically guide me the fastest way for the most part. Sometimes it's not totally accurate. I feel like it is making us go a certain way so that not everybody is going the certain way. But just know that you're going to have to deal with traffic. If you are from some of the other major parts of the country, say like Dallas or Houston or Los Angeles or Atlanta, or Jersey, like you really know what traffic is and you'll probably laugh at what traffic we have. But after you've lived here in Salt Lake City for a little while, you'll get acclimated to the new traffic. And when you're able to drive at, say, 7 p.m. at night and go up to Salt Lake and get there in 20 minutes, and then it takes you 45 minutes because of traffic, you'll kind of get the point. So that's con number eight, the traffic here in Salt Lake City. Con number seven is a con and a pro, but more of a con, I guess, and that's Sundays. So what I mean by Sundays is after living here now the last two years, we've found that certain stores aren't open on Sunday. Well, you know, we know that Chick-fil-A and Chicken Salad Chick and Hobby Lobby and a few other stores are typically closed all over on Sunday. There are other stores that you can't shop at on Sundays when you want to go to the grocery store. Sometimes they won't have everything stocked like they should on Sunday. So Sunday is not usually the best day of the week to shop at the grocery store. I find like a Wednesday, Thursday to be a better day. There's less people, but um, you also can't buy a car on Sunday here in Utah. So don't plan on that. You can't register a car. They don't do any sort of loans, which is a good thing and a bad thing. When we were looking for our car, it was fun to go on Sunday just to drive the different lots so we could look and not have 25 sales reps that were hounding us uh, to purchase a car. And, you know, that's when I bought my Jeep. And so, that's Sundays to a T. And so there's other places that are going to be closed on Sunday. And you'll just learn that you can't go there on Sunday because they're closed. Con number six is going to be the weather. So depending upon where you're moving from, you're going to either really, really like the weather or you're really not going to like the weather. So if you're not a big fan of dry, hot temperatures, then you probably won't like the summers here as much because we get the 90s up to about 105, 107 for a week or so, typically. And then it's normally in the 90s. What I really like about the summertime heat is after 7 p.m. at night, it's not so hot anymore. And you can just sit outside in your backyard. And it's really, really nice because it's not humid. Fall time, you're going to love the fall here. It's amazing. Temperatures are great. It's in the 60s and 70s. You know, we probably spike up to the 80 here. And then once it gets closer to Halloween time, it starts to get colder and it can snow then. And then it just stays kind of chilly until about March. But we get snow typically in December and we'll get anywhere from, I'd say, 12 inches to about four feet of snow. 
doesn't all happen in one night, so it's not like it's a big deal, but you have to deal with snow. So if you have little kids and you got to dust them off, put them in all their snow gear and all of that, that can be a pain in the butt. And then driving in the snow, if you don't have four-wheel drive, some days can be a challenge here when it just snows. However, they do a fabulous job of plowing the roads here, so you won't have to deal so much with not being able to get around. But it can happen if you don't have the right vehicle. I typically like to tell clients that I've helped, to, one of your cars should have all-wheel drive or four-wheel drive on it. That way, no matter what, you can always get out and get around here. Springtime, you're going to really like like I do because you're tired of it being cold and the snow and then everything is starting to warm up and trees are starting to get their leaves back. Your lawn yet hasn't started to grow yet, so you don't have to mow that. And then that leads you kind of into summer. So overall, the weather here, if you're OK with the snow and a lot of the people that I've helped move here are moving here because of snow, because they want to snowboard, they want to ski, they want to use the best snow on Earth. That's a big reason that you're here. But uh, everybody else seems to like the summer months because you can camp and fish and boat and everything else with the weather. That's con number six, the weather. Con number five is going to be your terrible drivers. And this is something that we didn't realize when we were checking Utah out or we relocated here that they actually had awful drivers. We thought the drivers in Nashville were terrible because Nashville has seven other states that touch it. So you have 700, seven other states drivers driving through Nashville all the time. But the drivers here are worse. They drive very erratic. They don't like to use their blinkers. They like to drive really, really fast on the freeways. They will cut across all the lanes. And the biggest thing that we've seen lately, and this is becoming more and more of an issue, is drivers are running more and more red lights. And so this, I feel like, is something that I've been warning everybody that's moving here lately is Right before you're ready to go at the red light, if you're the first to go, just give it that other little half second and make sure someone's not running the light before you take off. And make sure you let your kid drivers know that they can't just launch right at the, the light or else they're going to end up getting into an accident. If you think the drivers in your state are worse, then comment below where they are because I'd love to hear from you. Con number four is going to be taxes. And so coming from Nashville, we had no state income tax in the state of Tennessee. so. Individuals and corporations in Utah pay a flat tax of 4.85%. And while that is really low, if you're moving from California or other states where it has high uh, state income taxes, other states have no state income tax. So that's a negative. It's nice that it's pretty low at 4.85%. Uh, on the flip side, property taxes here in Utah are really, really good and they sit right around 0.62%, and then that varies uh, county and city to city around. So property tax, though, is on the lower end in the state of Utah. Con number three is going to be your poor air quality here in Utah. And since we're bordered by mountains to the east and to the west here in Salt Lake City, air gets trapped here, and until we get the right winds to blow it all out, it just gets trapped here. And we have something called the inversion layer that happens in November leaves us in March or April where warm air gets trapped by the cold air. And so it just keeps uh, the air quality here in Utah pretty poor. And so if you have asthma or other breathing conditions, then you should check with your doctor or uh, and see if that's okay. And then I've just had other clients that have come out in those months just to see if it was going to really bother them. Myself, I don't notice the air quality problem. I get alerts on my phone that say air quality is really poor, but I don't remember seeing any in the last two years where they told us you had to stay indoors, so it's not to that level. It's just not all that great. Con number two is the restrictive alcohol laws in Utah. Now, Utah has some of the strictest laws in the entire nation, 0.05% for your DUI limits, can't buy alcohol on Sundays and holidays, can't buy alcohol past 1 a.m., a bunch of different laws uh, have to do with alcohol here, and you need to do some research on that if alcohol is an issue for you. Hasn't been an issue for me at all since I don't drink very often. I'll have a drink here or there, but uh, the other people I know that have. And then to buy any of the good alcohol, you have to go to the state-run liquor store, so you're stuck paying their prices because you can't buy it anywhere else, or you're 
having to do what some people do and they'll buy it in other states and then bring it back with them. And then con number one is gonna be that there's no gambling, there's no lottery, no gambling here at all. So you'll have to drive an hour and 45 minutes to go to Windover, Nevada, where you can get some casinos there or up to an Indian casino up in Idaho, about three hours drive. It has slots, I believe it doesn't have table games. Or you can drive five and a half hours to Las Vegas and get everything that you want. And that's where I've been going. Uh, I've been there four times already since we've moved here to Utah. Absolutely love going to Vegas. Cheap rooms. Used to be able to get really good prices on buffets, but those seem to have gone away. And so if you're a gambling person at all, you want to play card games, uh, you want to go to the slots or heck, even the lottery, you can't do any of that here in Utah as a whole or even in Salt Lake City. So that's why that's con number one, especially when I keep seeing these Powerball things where it's a billion dollars and then I can't even buy a ticket for it if I wanted to. It sort of sucks that that isn't legal here at all in Utah. So if you want to know more information about making that move here to Salt Lake City, Utah, please reach out to me and my team. We'd love to hear from you. Give us a call, shoot us a text, send us an email. We'd love to help you make that move here to Salt Lake City fun, enjoyable, and amazing. So until next time, be rad.